What's up, family? Gonna wait for some people to get on. Just wanted to give a quick message. Man, we are in the end of times, man. We are in the end of times. Jesus is truly coming back soon. We got wars, rumors of wars. We got a whole bunch of drama all over. The That white horse, man. The Antichrist. He's already here. He'll be revealed soon. What's up, family? What city and state y'all from? What city and state y'all from? We are in the beginning of the end. <laughs> We're in the beginning of the end. If you know, you know. If you know what I'm talking about, put a fire, a fire emoji. We are in the beginning of the end. We got Kenya, Brazil, Fresno, Corpus Christi, Elizabeth. Tampa, Finland, Mexico, London. We got the nations in the house. What's up, family? God bless you all. In the precious holy name of Yeshua, this beautiful Sunday, Sunday afternoon. I'm going to give you all a quick message. Then I, I got to go back to my family. I literally had to get in my car. And I had to drive down the street and go to a gas station because we live in the sticks and everybody was using the Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi we got is kind of whack. <laughs> but it's all good, though. We have free free range chicken, so we get we get those organic free range eggs, man. God is good. Got to prepare, man. We in the end of times. We are in the end of times. Everyone put in the chat. If you're with me, if you're going to pay attention, if you're going to listen to this message, if you tapped in, you know, if you aren't here, it's not coincidence. I need you to do something. If that's you, smash the like button and I want you to start spamming that fire emoji because I'm going to give a powerful message and the Holy Spirit gave me this. I did not want to go live. I wanted to stay hanging out with my family. But. Obedience is better than sacrifice. All right. I just pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would touch who needs to be touched. Holy Spirit, have your way. Release revelation. I thank you, Lord, for what you've already given me in Jesus' name. Amen. So first, I want to start off by saying this. My ministry, the ministry, the service that God has preordained me to, to move in, right? Now I'm just, it's being confirmed by men. I've been ordained since before I was in my mother's womb, and God is now allowing it to come to fruition. It's being, it's being, I'm being exalted. I'm being, I'm being shown onto the nations. Right, is to win souls. So I know some people, you know, they they have, you know, have, there's different operations and administrations. There are some ministries where it's very powerful worship, and they focus on, you know, rising up worshipers. Some people, it's prophets, a school of prophet. They get really deep in revelation, and you know, it's a lot of prophecy, which is good. Some are, um, you know, some some churches are are big on, you know, international crusades, which I love. And I know I'm going to be going overseas soon, too. And they focus on that, that, that. And I've seen all different types of ministries, man. You got very pastoral ministries where it's a lot of families and it's really, um, you know, family oriented, which I think every church should be. But there are some that are more catered to like, you know what I'm talking about, family, like, you know, you know, events like, you know, going here and going there. I love all Every ministry that's of God, I love it. If the Holy Spirit is there and he's doing his thing, I love it. But in this end times, period right now, God is rising up a lot of churches where there's evangelism, a lot of evangelists, because souls need to be saved. So the Lord has our ministry, the Remnant Revival Outreach Center, focused primarily on evangelism. Our worship is powerful. The presence of God is there every single time. I mean, people come to our services in person and even online. And man, I heard a woman come to me last service and literally say word for word, I've never experienced worship like this. Older woman, been to churches, and she said, I've never experienced 
the presence of God like this. Wow. And I mean, I've heard that many times from all types of people, old, young, white, black, Asian, Spanish. That's because God moves. It's his church. So, but at The Rock, we do have, you know, we, we focus on singles ministries. We have men's ministries, women's ministries, but our primary, like, go-to, like, you know, when you, um, when, you know, with the basketball players, right? And you know how basketball players have their, like, their strong suit, right? Like Steph Curry can shoot. He's known for shooting, but he can do many things. So our strong suit at The Rock is evangelism. You all know that. Um, it's not just me. It's everyone in the ministry. And we've been evangelizing radically since before we put out any videos. I'm talking about before any videos were put out, before ever, anyone even knew who I was. We were already evangelizing. I mean, in the field, Friday nights, downtown Orlando, all throughout the week. I mean, we've, we, 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 we've had services outside and we're bringing that back. I mean, literal outdoor services where souls are getting saved from the street. I mean, we love it. We're frontline. We love to get it in. So with that being said, listen, hold on. Let me block somebody real quick. Ooh. Hey, block. So with that being said, we went to the club this Saturday, no, Friday, Friday night, downtown Orlando. A lot of people are out, right? And a lot of ministries come out on Fridays. And when they come out on Fridays, you know, we, everyone evangelizes usually the people that come out the clubs. Some ministries, what they do is they pass out waters. They give people water, which is good because a lot of people are drunk to make sure that they get home safe. They probably pray over the waters. Amen. Some ministries get the, the street corner, hop on the microphone, go go ham, you know, preaching on the microphone. Some ministries, um, we saw a ministry out there um, this weekend that was in the middle of the street because they block out a certain area of um, on Orange Ave. They were in the middle of the street worshiping, playing the, uh, the guitar, playing the drums. It was powerful, man. And we love it, man. Before, you know, two years ago when we were going out downtown Orlando, we didn't see that many ministries. We didn't see that many ministries. So now we're seeing a lot of revival in Orlando. People are coming from all over and moving. But what we did, um, The Rock, is we were six, six of the soldiers of our ministry, we, we went inside, inside the church, right? I mean, the church, the club. And I was going to, and yes, it's a church. It's a demonic church. We went inside the demonic church. And we went in there with strategy. We even got a section. You guys are you guys are gonna see the entire video. It's coming out soon. I mean, we went inside. I mean, we got we popped bottles of soda water <laughs> and Red Bull, like, and we evangelized. Man, I mean, somebody literally came up to me and said, "I want to give my life to Christ. I'm not even supposed to be here." I mean, it was multiple men that got touched like that in the club, and I'm talking about demonic ratchet, like. They were playing hip hop, people smoking weed, popping pills, drunk, crazy. Like, like the ghetto was to the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? And we went in there, man, and we we literally, man, we prayed for people. We laid hands. We preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, we went to the bathroom area where, where people could hear us better. I mean, it was powerful. You got you guys are gonna see the video. Super powerful. It's coming out soon. But with that being said, you know. We had to pray, so we went and we prayed before, and then when we got in at the section, we were praying in tongues, de declaring and decreeing the word of God, literally quoting scripture, praying scripture, carabaso, in, in a circle, man. We weren't dancing to the music. We weren't moving and jigging and grooving, none of that. We didn't do none of that disclaimer. We did none of that. We didn't. We, we weren't with it. We were there on assignment. And once, once they brought the sparklers with the sign, you guys are going to see all of it. It's powerful. That's when we, we dispersed and we went preaching the gospel and evangelizing, praying for people. So we went to Satan's church. We went literally into Satan, the synagogue of Satan. I'm talking about where there's a demonic portal. And I'm talking, these clubs downtown and every downtown, why do you think every downtown area is so oppressed? So many homeless people, so many, so many people that, that need help, so many people that are dealing with this and that and when you go every when you go to every major city or any city in general and you go downtown it's always where the money is it's where it's where all the like the like the evil like the love of money and this and that and designer and all it's like nothing's wrong with money nothing's wrong with designer i um i i get money obviously because i got to support my family and i i have designer clothes too but it's the love of it you see a lot of people that chase vanity alcohol um 
drugs. I mean, like, it's crazy. Downtown is always the worst because there's demonic portals. So with a demonic portal, the only way it can be open is through sin. It's through, it's through witchcraft. It's through, through, through idolatry, through the things that are, that are bad, that, that obviously that, that, that cater to Satan. Worship onto Satan allows Satan to get more power. People wonder why. Like, how, does, how do demons go over regions? Why can't we just bind the demon and bring it down? It's because it's the sin of the people in that area that give power to the demon. When you're in Christ, that principality can't, can't, cannot enter you, cannot use you anymore. When you're freed, you can walk in any area where there's a principality over the region and you're protected because you got the light of God in you. You're over that. You're over that principality when it comes to rank in the spirit. But the reason that principality can't, that will, will not just go away and everything just is perfect. You know, if that was the case, I can just go to every major city right now and just bind the principality, rebuke it, and, and the city will go back, will, will go, will, it'll be perfect and everyone will get saved. And it, I mean, how amazing is that? No, that, that's, that's not how it works. It's through sin. It's when people sin, when they're fornicating, rape, when there's murder, when there's, when there's, when there's, when there's um, adultery, when there's, when there's fighting, when there's taking drugs, witchcraft, sorcery, all those things give power to demons and they allow demonic portals to open. That's what witches and warlocks are doing. By them having altars and making sacrifices and, and having evil eyes and crystals and all these things, they're worshiping demons, which give the demons in their life power. And in, in their house, in their apartment, they have to create a demonic atmosphere in order for demons to dwell. And they might, they, they don't think it's demons, which is in warlocks. I mean, some know, but some, most of them don't. They think they're ancestral spirits or their grandma, their grandpa, familiar spirits, but really it's demons. It's demons and they're, and, and they're messing with them. And the, what, the, what does the devil do? He lies. So he's lying to them. He wants to steal their life, their calling, their destiny, their purpose, their family members, their, their marriage. And he wants to destroy. That's his goal. That's every demon's goal. That's their DNA. That's their purpose. That's, that's their mission is to kill, steal, and destroy. So we went where there was a major demonic portal. The club we went into was one of the most popular cl clubs in downtown Orlando. And Orlando's a major city. And we prayed. And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. Angels were, lo were loosed. People got touched, saved, all that. And when this video drops, it's going to encourage so many more people to go do the same. Now, with that being said, you know what? You know, you're gonna, you guys are going to see in the video, myself and um, one of the pastors, we were talking in the video. And we were like, man, it's crazy how witches and warlocks will go into churches to try to take people out. A lot of witches and warlocks willingly go into churches. They'll go in the churches, sit in the pews, sit in the back, and they're looking for prey. So you're probably asking me, Apostle Rich, how? How does that work? How does that work? It works like this. If you're a Christian that's living lukewarm in compromise, if you're a Christian that's coming to church, but you're just drinking, smoking, fornicating, and you have no fruit of true salvation. Look, the Bible says by their fruit, you'll know them, right? Yes, character is, one, is, is very important, but also your character, right? Your character what do you like? What's your fruit? Like, like, yes, you, are you, you're probably loving, maybe you're loving, but you're loving to, you're loving sex, you're loving alcohol. You might be loving the people and really nice and kind, but then you're over there smoking dope, getting high. Like that's, that's, that's the fruit of Satan. And if you're one of those people and you're all up in the church, witches and warlock, warlocks are looking for the weak. They can't touch the ones who are on fire. They can't touch the man of God or woman of God who, who has a relationship with Jesus seeking him every day. Because when you have a relationship with Jesus, you ain't over there living in iniquity. You're not a worker of iniquity. You're not practicing lawlessness. I always break this down. Look, if I go play basketball every day, I am a hooper. I'm a practicer. I'm a worker, right? Practicer, ER, worker, ER. I'm practicing lawlessness. If I'm playing ball every day, right? I'm, a, I'm practicing basketball. But if I'm practicing sin every day with no conviction, with no repentance, with no change. That means that the power of the Holy Spirit is not evident in my life. You can talk a good talk, but if the power of God is not, is not shown in your life, through which is repentance, which is change, growth, new levels, more better character. If you're not seeing growth, if you're not leveling up, you're leveling down. If you're that same Christian that can't give up the weed for years, 
You ain't leveling up. You're going down. You cannot deny the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You can't tell me that the Holy Spirit power can't get you to repent of marijuana. No, you can't. Because if God completely sh he shifted and transformed me and I was the worst of the worst, why can't he change you? It means that you don't believe. So witches and warlocks, they're looking for those types of Christians. The ones with open doors. They're looking for the ones that 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 come and worship God and scream hallelujah but with their lips but their hearts are far from him. They're looking for the ones that think because they sit in the church and 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 they pay their tithes and their offerings they're protected. No, you ain't protected. You're protected when you submit to God. When you abide in the in the, in the secret place which is in a relationship with him. That's the only way you can be protected. So witches and warlocks, they're going to hit the weak ones. They're in the church. So last night, and it's not coincidence, because Friday we went to the nightclub and we 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 uh we raised havoc, man, in the enemy's camp, right? We did our thing, all by the grace of God, by his power. But on uh, last night during service, a warlock came to the church. And it was as I was preaching, as I began preaching, I saw him walk in. How did I know he was a warlock? He had the little stick, he had the beads. Feathers, the whole nine. I used to be in witchcraft. I used, I was going to be a dual inducted warlock. I know exactly what he was doing. The man could not sit down. He sat, he literally sat down, got up, sat down, got up, started pacing back and forth. He could not stay in the sanctuary because the presence of God was too strong. So he got up and he went around. And if you ever, if you ever been to our church, it's pretty big by the grace of God where we rent out. <clears throat> and if you go around the, by the bathroom, it's next to the children's ministry, but my, my wife, who's a whole prophetess, who sees in the spirit, she saw him walk in, she watched, and she saw him go around, and she went and followed him, because I was preaching. And she saw him go into the bathroom and waited, and then he came out the bathroom and, and gave a toy. He gave a literal doll with pins and all types of weird stuff or whatever was on it. Weird, weird toy, a witchcraft item to a kid. And my wife had to go take it, snatch it, they, get rid of that, and then look at him and say, well, you know, what you doing? He manifested in anger. My wife told him, look, you say you, because she started saying, I believe in Yeshua HaMashiach. She said, you believe in Yeshua? Then why you got all those beads on? I used to be in witchcraft. I know what that is. And then that's when my, and then that's when he, he got, he got all crazy. And one of the armor bearers came and, ex, and escorted him out. So I'm, I'm on here to tell you guys, I ain't worried about the warlocks and witches. I want them to come to church because I want them to get saved. I want them to get saved. I want the witches and the warlocks to get saved. And you guys have seen it on our videos, witches and warlocks, witch, witches giving up witchcraft, getting saved. I mean, people get uh, Freemasons, all types of stuff getting saved. Hallelujah. But best believe just because we're the body of Christ doesn't mean that birds can't come in. The Bible is very clear that that God allows the birds, Satan, the fowls, the demons. He allows people that are like literally sent to bring condemnation in the church. A lot of times churches get cleaned up like that. I've seen it, man. I've seen people. I've seen literally people sent by Satan to the church and take out like three or four people who are already, their heart was already wicked. Their heart was already, like they were being fake and, and take them out. Those same people all up downtown in Orlando in the club. I mean, I've seen people who were on fire in the church, get lukey, get lukewarm. We go downtown to preach and they're walking to the club. Pastor Rich. I'm like, what you doing? I'm about to go in the club. What? Like that. I'm being for real with y'all. You shouldn't be scared. You shouldn't be fearful if you have a relationship with God. And when I say relationship, I'm talking about every, like you, you are in relationship. I, I, I was talking about this last night. My wife. If I work a nine to five job. Before I go to work, I'm saying bye to my wife, right? When I get off of work, who am I calling? My wife. If I don't come home. For two or three or four days. If I don't come home, what, what's going to happen? My wife is a Haitian from New York. She calling the FBI. She calling the SWAT team. She calling the United States Marine Corps. She calling the Navy SEAL. She's going to find out where I'm at because she ain't playing with that. Right? Because we're in a relationship. And I love my wife, Pastor Carleen. She calls and checks on. Like, man, we, we don't go. We don't go. Uh, man, if I go three hours without talking to her it's that's crazy we check we check on each other throughout the day she calls me i call her if she don't come home it's a wrap too i'm, I'm, I'm getting my my rifle and i'm i'm, I'm hitting the streets 
But I'm for real. I love my wife and I want her to be protected. Somebody going to probably be like, oh, false prophet. He said he has a rifle. Yes, I have guns. Christians are allowed to have guns. Be spirit led. Ask the Lord about everything you do. All things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. Be led by the spirit and make sure God wants you to do it. Disclaimer. So if I have a relationship with my wife and I can't go a day without talking to her or seeing her, that's a relationship. It's the same thing with God. If you can go three, four, five, six days without, without, without praying, without reading the word, without seeking him, without acknowledging him, bro, you don't have a relationship with God. You aren't baptized in the Holy Spirit. You're not born again. There's no way. You're not born again. You can't tell me you're, you're born again if the only time that you focus your mind, your consciousness, or your spirit on, on God is when you go to church on Sundays. If that's the only time that you're, that you're even thinking about God, man, you don't have a relationship. You ain't married to Christ. The Bible says when you give your life to Christ, you get married. When you dunk under that, when you get dunked under that water, your old body's dead. You're, 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 you're risen up a new creation. And you're married to Christ, clothed in his righteousness. So you can't tell me that you're born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, the same spirit I got. I got, I have the Holy Spirit. He's my friend. I commune with him daily. I can't go a day without him. I'm talking about throughout the day, I'm talking to the Lord. I'm partnering with God all day. I can't not do it. If I don't partner with God, I, 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 I don't even know how that, I don't even know how that even, I don't even, I can't even think about how that is like anymore. Like, I don't even understand that. Like, it doesn't even make sense to me. So yes, yeah, so a warlock came in the church last night. I mean, he got, he got, he got, he got escorted out. Because he was wilding out. But if he would have sat there and he would have listened to the message, I would have had no problem. Honestly, after the message, I would have went and prayed for him. That's what I would have done. I would have, that would have been amazing. I would have prophesied over him, cast out some demons. I, I was hoping for that. But obviously the enemy had other plans, which is to get him out. <laughs> Once the enemy brought him in, <laughs> realized that, oh shoot, God is here. He had to get him out real quick. So when you have a relationship with God, you don't got to worry about witchcraft. You don't got to worry about warlocks and coming at you. You don't got to worry about nothing because none of that, because you have power over all the power of the enemy. You don't got to sit there and freak out and be like, oh my gosh, they're doing witchcraft on me, bro. You know how many witches and warlocks have my name and probably my whole family, the whole ministry have my name, our names that written on their altars with their deities. There's people on here right now, probably live that are working for the devil, that don't like me, and are just literally monitoring. And they don't even know. They think they're just watching because they're trying to, oh, I'm trying to protect my, like it's a war. Bro, your, 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 your ancestral spirits already lost the war. The devil lost the war on the cross. There's nothing you can do. You can monitor me all day. I hope you do. Because if you keep doing it, you're going to get saved. I remember the other day we were going to a witchcraft shop to go preach the gospel. I mentioned the name of the witchcraft shop on live. 30 minutes later, when we got there, they already had a cop waiting, locked the doors. That means that somebody on live literally got off the live, called the person, told them we were coming and let them know. I know that witches and warlocks are doing all types of rituals and, and do it. But they have they they even they know that in the realm of the spirit, they can't do nothing against me because I'm God's child. Even they know they can't do nothing. They cannot do anything to me or my family. If anything happens to me and my family, God allowed it for us to learn a trial, for us to get stronger, but right? The trials and the tribulations, they build perseverance, character, and hope. Some of y'all be going through a trial thinking it's the devil. God allows it. When you're in a relationship with God and you start going through trials, it's because God is making you stronger. I preached on that last night, temptation, trials, tests. That's the only way you can rank up. Job, what happened to Job? God literally told Satan, who was going to and fro, right? Walking around. He said, Job, have you considered my faithful servant, Job? I mean, he said, he said um, Satan, have you considered my faithful servant, Job? Why did God ask Satan, have you considered him? Because God wanted to promote Job. After Job lost everything and went through all that and never cursed God, which God knew he would never do. What happened to Job? 
seven times fold everything. He lost his kids, his wife. He lost his property, his land, his business, his animals, crops. He lost his friends, his, his respect, his dignity. He lost everything. On the street, literally, his boils getting licked up by dogs. His cuts, his boils, his it was he had he had he had, a, he had a disease. He was leprosy. Like he was he was he was all he was he had leprosy. He was all messed up. Like like imagine like you go from balling out business, successful, you know, probably modern day multi millionaire, probably even billionaire. All got kids. All of these things. But what happened? He lost everything. And then God gave him a promotion seven times fold. So sometimes your prayers are being answered by a trial, a test. And the question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to focus on demons and be like, ah, I hate the devil. I rebuke you, Satan. Oh, and you can come. That's fear. Because then I see that. I see people come to church. I'm going through this right now, this trial. They, they literally will say that out of their mouth. I'm going through this trial right now. Where, or, and I'm like, you're going through a trial. That's good. Are you rejoicing? The Bible says to rejoice when you go through various trials. Because the testing of your faith will produce hope, character, perseverance. You're about to rank up in faith and glory. You're going from faith to faith. You're about to rank up in the spirit, my guy. Why are you worried about a trial? Yeah, they suck. They hurt. They have to. Your faith is getting put through a fire, like Second Peter says. Your faith is getting put through a fire and coming out purer than it was before. Duh, it's going to burn. It's going to hurt. Jump up and down and praise the Lord. Get up and run. Run around. Praise God. You feel me? Praise him because that's because when you come out of that, that trial, you're going to be stronger than you were before. I preached on that last night. The way you get through these trials is remembering what God did for you before. When you got a track record of trials and tribulations and you've been holding on to Jesus's garment, this is for the ones that actually pass the tests. Because some of y'all be going through the same trials for years because you never pass. Same trial, same trial, same trial. Still in poverty, still dealing with still still dealing with doubt, still going in and out of the clubs, in and out of the clubs, still can't stop fornicating, stop, can't stop drinking and smoking, still can't do these things. Look, God has grace, but grace is not a license to sin. You can't play with God's grace, bro. But God has so much. Because wherever there's wherever there's wherever there's sin, the, the, wherever sin abounds, grace abounds even more. So yes, even if you're that person that's in and out, God still forgives you, still loves you. It's just this is me talking. This is not God speaking. This is me talking. This is me. I, this, this might be a little bit fleshly. I repent. God, God does love you and he wants you to come back. For real, for real. He wants you to know that it's by his power, man. I repent. That was, that was a little bit in the flesh. It's by his power that you can really, like, I'm telling you. We did a, we did a skit last night. I had a swole, a swole buddy. Swole, swole kid. A young kid. Came up. You know, swole white dudes in the gym. Cool kid. Really cool. You can tell he works out. Big biceps. He came up and we brought a dumbbell. And I said, he took his right arm and I said, give me 50 reps. And I think it was like 20 pounds. When he got to about 40 something, he couldn't go no more. And what happened? It dropped. He couldn't pick it up. That was it. He was done. I said, do it again on your left arm. When he got to about 30 or 40, I started spotting him. I started picking it up for him. And he kept going and he passed what he did before. I explained to the, to, the, to the congregation, the right arm represents us trying to do it in our own strength, thinking that we got it without God, thinking that, oh, I don't got to see God. I don't got to I don't got to go to church. I don't got to pay my tithes and offerings. I don't got to I don't I don't got to put no work in because when you're lifting, you're working out. So when you think you don't got to put no work in and God will do it all, you're going to fall. You're not going to be able to do it. Because you ain't got no power. Communing with the Holy Spirit is what gives you power. It's like a Tesla or a gas or a car. If I drive this car till it gets to E and I don't fill up my tank, it's not going nowhere. Daily communion, which means daily prayer, daily Bible reading with the Lord is how you get power and stay in the faith. That's how you get power and you don't depart from the faith. The Bible says that in the end, that last days now, many will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Many will be deceived, if so, even possible, the very elect. 
you must endure to the end to be saved. Look, some of y'all think I got baptized, gave my life to Christ. That's it. I don't got to worry about nothing. Once saved, always saved. Bro, I don't believe in that. That's not, that's not me. Hey, and you can clip up this video and post it. I don't believe in that. I believe that once you're born again, you have to maintain a relationship, a partnership with God. It's a partnership. God has given us free will and you still got free will when you come to Christ too. So when you come to Christ, you still have free will. So when you come to Christ, ain't nothing forcing you to seek God. You have advantage now. You have the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You have his power living inside of you. But you still got a choice to go pray or not. You still got a choice to read your word or not. You still got a, cho a choice to go to church. You still got a choice to pay your tithes and offerings. You still got a choice to repent daily. You still got a choice to confess your sins so he can wash you. You still got a choice to do these things. You got a choice. And when you choose Jesus, like the left arm, go watch the YouTube video from last night on temptation. God spots you and you, you're able to do the maximum amount of reps. And sometimes God will take the weight off you and put you in a season of rest and then bring the weight back. It's time to work out, my son and my daughter, because you got to get stronger. What happens when you lift weights? You got to get stronger, right? You're lifting weights. You're getting swollen. You're getting swollen in the spirit. The Bible says you got to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Confession is an ongoing thing to the Lord. It ain't just a one day thing. The Bible says if you confess your sins to Jesus, he's faithful to wash away all unrighteousness. Why do you think Jesus said pray like this? Right? You know the, the, you know the Lord's prayer? Forgive my trespasses, right? As we forgive those who trespass against us. Why do you think Jesus said to pray like that? Because we should, be, we should be seeking the Father daily, asking our sins to be forgiven because we realize that we are fallen. We're in these fallen vessels of, of flesh. We realize we need grace and mercy and that we need his power. And that's called being poor in spirit. And blessed are those who are poor in spirit, who realize that without God's power, they can't make it, who seek him daily because they, that's being poor in spirit. That means without God, you're poor in spirit. You're poverty. You have poverty. The only way you can re-up, the only way you can get that spiritual currency, which is faith, is by seeking the spirit of faith, the Holy Ghost, the one who gives you faith. The Bible says he gives each one their own measure of faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You cannot increase, increase in faith and grow in, in Christ, grow in the faith unless you hear God. And faith comes by hearing God. That's through prayer. That's through reading. And as you read, you, you hear him. You should never read the Bible alone. Even when I'm alone, I'm not alone. I read with the Holy Spirit. I never read the Bible alone. If I start reading the Bible and I'm in the flesh... And I'm just reading to read or I'm just reading to read really quick. I stop reading. There's no point. It's pointless. I'm not going to get anywhere. But when I pray and I get in the presence and I say, Holy Ghost, let's read. That's when it's lit because that's when the Holy Ghost is going to pour into me. And I'm going to increase in faith by hearing. Reading the Bible in the flesh is a very scary thing. It can turn you into a religious Pharisee. Be very careful. My recommendation, pray, worship before you get, even if it's 10, 15 minutes, five minutes, whatever, get in the spirit, pray in tongues, put on some worship music, go somewhere and concentrate before you read the word, get in the Holy Ghost so that you're reading it with the spirit of God and not alone. Hallelujah. And man, we are in the end of times. If you read the book of Revelation, it talks about the, the white horse, the four, the four horsemen, and one of them was white. That's the Antichrist. At the beginning of that seven-year period, the white horse coming. We already here. The Antichrist is already here on the earth. The Antichrist spirit is poured out on the earth. Too many people blaspheming God, saying God is not Jesus. Jesus Christ is not. He didn't come in the flesh. Jesus Christ did not rise on the third day. He was talking about Christ consciousness, not but not but not but not understanding that Jesus Christ actually came as a human, as a the fullness of God bodily. And that he did die on the cross, he was buried, rose on the third day, and that we must believe that he's our Lord and Savior and he rose from the dead and returned away from all sin, wickedness in the world and turned to Christ to receive the Holy Spirit. People don't believe that no more. There's too many false gospels, false teaching out there, man. I'm telling you, man. Grace without repentance will lead you straight to hell. Straight like that. You start thinking in your mind, man, I ain't got to really go hard like that. I'm straight. I gave my life to Christ. I got grace. I'm going to keep doing me. I, man, 
I was in a barber shop yesterday, and I'm listening to a drunk man, a drunk, a drunk dude in the barber shop, literally saying, talking about grace, preaching. The man got a gift to preach, and he's preaching drunk about how he, how he believes in his own version of Jesus, how he don't got to stop the things he does because of grace. <laughs> oh, bro, a lot, hey, a lot of people going to hell, and if you teaching that false doctrine to people, to God's people. That's scary. You're gonna to have to give an account. There's a, you know that you know the people who were false prophets and false teachers who led people away from God, who led people away from Jesus. You know, in hell, they have a worse judgment. They're being tormented worse than the other people. Be careful, man. That's why not everyone should teach. Because the minute you start. Bro, like the minute you go away from the gospel of Jesus Christ, the minute you start going too far out, trying to get all this extra stuff, bro, you start leading people astray. Stick to the basics, man. Win souls, disciple, make disciples who make disciples. Holiness. I believe in holiness. I believe in holiness and purity. I believe in it. At The Rock, we believe in that. We believe in repentance. We don't, we don't just allow people to come in, girlfriend, boyfriend, boot up and kiss him. We don't allow it. People will call me whatever they want. Oh, you're a Pharisee. Oh, you're a false prophet. I'm a false prophet for telling you to repent from your fornication because you can't stop looking at your girl the wrong way. No, we don't believe in girlfriend-boyfriend relationship at The Rock. I'll stand on that. They can call me whatever they want. Heretic. Okay, whatever, bro. We're going to see on Judgment Day who is the heretic. Telling people they can be girlfriend, boyfriend, do whatever they want. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't how we moving out here. We really sold out. We really stepping for Jesus. We really don't drink and smoke. We don't drink and smoke. No, we don't. We don't. I, I, we don't allow vapes. People can't vape. You can't be part. You cannot be under the covering of the rock and, and be a vapor. You can't. If you vaping and you're under this covering, we don't know yet. And, then, and when God gives that word of knowledge, it's, it's time to throw it away. But if you think you can come to the rock, I, I, where in the Bible does it say we cannot vape and smoke cigarettes? Boy, you're destroying your temple. That's witchcraft. Get that out. Get that witchcraft out of the church. See, look, some of the witches and warlocks that be up in the church are the ones who don't even identify as one. They don't even know they're moving in witchcraft. Witchcraft is control. The ones who are the, rich, the witches and warlocks are the ones in the church leading people to the, to, to the pit, leading people to the world. Oh, you can drink, man. We can have a whiskey on Sundays when we watch football. It's okay, two or three. But the Bible says that drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. We just won't get drunk. We'll just play the line and get tipsy. Oh, all right. You, yeah, you go ahead and do that. That's a small, it's the small foxes that destroy the whole bunch. The, sm the devil doesn't get you with the, get drunk. No, it's the little, just drink one drink. You scrolling on Instagram. You scrolling on Instagram. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You scrolling. And you, you're supposed to keep scrolling because you're on your explore page, but then you stop. Then you start looking at the wrong thing. Now you're dwelling on it. Oh, I'll be all right. Next thing you know, you click on the page. Oh, I'll be all right. Next thing you know, you're going through all the pictures, zooming in. Oh, I'll be all right. Next thing you know, you're watching porn. Oh, I'll be all right. I repent. Now you're hitting up your ex. Oh, I'll be all right. Now you're having sex. Oh, I'll be all right. Now you got a, now you a whole baby daddy, baby mama, all up in all types of generational curses. Reprobate. You know what that means? When you reprobate, debased, that means you're blinded now. You went from being on, being on fire for God to blinded because you wanted to, you didn't want to keep scrolling. How sold out are you, are you for Jesus? Are you willing to step? When I came to Christ, I knew I had to stop drinking, fornicating, pouring all that. Man, I was so sold out. And I didn't realize that it was the power of God that can change me in the beginning. So what I would do is I'd start smashing my, I'd start hitting walls, punching walls, hitting my head on the wall. I'm not going to watch porn. And then I, re I remember like learning how to say, Jesus, and then they would go away. As I grew in the faith, I realized I didn't have to scream Jesus, even though still to this very day, when I'm going through a trial and it gets bad, I get to I get to scream and to praise in his name loud. I'm talking about voice gone because I know that it's his power that can, that's only by the power of God that will allow me to endure. Endurance is like when you're running a marathon or you're running. The, the, I, I'm pretty sure everyone has, has, has ran a mile when you're on that last lap and you want to give up, but you keep going. That's endurance. And all these temptations and trials are going to get you to the point where you're going to have to endure. You're going to have to walk in public. And when you see that girl. Right. And you want to stare at the booty instead of staring at the booty. You turn away. You walk away. Bro, I don't play with the Jezebels. I ain't playing. 
We ain't we ain't, we ain't having uh, you ain't conversating with me. My wife ain't here. I gotta go. The minute a Jezebel come pull up on me and start trying to cause it'd be random. I, I I bring up my wife immediately. Yeah, me and my wife. Yeah, me. I'm about to go see my wife in about. The minute I bring up my wife, you see their face from like, to. Now they don't want to talk to you no more. Good, get out of here. Because the people that are you being used by Jezebel, they don't even know. It's those spirits operating, bro. We in the end of times. Many are going to go to hell, bro. The way to heaven is, is, is narrow. Making it, to making it to heaven is not just one altar call. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh, I'm saved. No, it's by faith. And faith means to follow. And it's following in your heart. It's continuing to follow Jesus. You have free will. You gave your life to Christ. Hallelujah. You were born again. Praise God. The angels rejoice when sinners come to repentance. Not water baptism. Not running to the altar crying. The angels rejoice when one sinner comes to change, repentance. Someone who was practicing sin, a sinner, ER. When one sinner, ER, comes to repentance, the angels rejoice in heaven. But then my brother and my sister, after you, after you repent, after you turn away, now you're about to fight. And you're fighting the good fight of faith. And what's crazy is that in, on this planet, there's no, there's no, that nobody is just coasting on the same level. Either way, you're going, like, phew, I just saw a whole vision. Hallelujah. Imagine a ladder. When you're on a race, you can't go backwards. This race, you can't go backwards. So what you're doing is you're either going up to heaven or down to hell. That's why nobody that goes to hell was just sent there by God. No, God doesn't send anybody to hell. They make their own free will decision to choose hell. They choose sin. They choose the demons. They choose the world. They choose the devil. They choose the witchcraft, the, the, the porn. They choose the clubs. They choose you. They, when, when you choose that, you send yourself to hell. That's why nobody in hell right now, nobody in hell right now is like, I, I don't deserve to be here. No, every single person in hell, every, cause look, we're all going to the eternity in eternity where there's no time. The only difference is is that, there, that in, in eternity, you got heaven or hell. There's no purgatory. And everybody that's in hell, they are, they're not tripping like, <laughs> why am I here? I'm not supposed to know. They, they know I'm supposed to be here, but please forgive me. But it's too late. And all that's playing in their mind are all the bad things they did. They're being tormented. The same thing that you did here on this earth is what you're going to be tormented down there. If you are a rapist down there, you're going to be, you're going to be getting raped or, or you're going to just, that's all, all day, every day. That's all that's going to happen to you. It sucks down. It's the worst. The demons have full control to do whatever they want. And then you get then you get thrown into the lake of fire after judgment. Man, that sucks. But my brothers and my sisters, to make it to heaven, very simple. A relationship with Jesus Christ. Every day pray. Are you going to be perfect? No, you're not going to be perfect. There was only one, there was only one human that was ever perfect, and that was Jesus. And that's why his blood is a perfect sacrifice. It washes all our sins. So our job, man and men and women of God, is to seek God daily and rely on his power. Fill up our gas tank. You see, this message is going to help y'all, man, because what's going to happen is when, when you get tired and you don't want to pray, you're going to say, man, I remember when Pastor Rich said, I need to fill up my gas tank. I ain't going to sleep. Some of y'all getting raped in your sleeps. Some of y'all going through all these, these bad dreams because you're not praying before you go to sleep. Man, when you realize how important God's power is, sleep hunger, nothing will keep you away from, from seeking him because you know you need him. That's porn spirit. The same way some of y'all can't even go to sleep without watching porn. Instead of porn, you should switch it with prayer. Some of y'all, like we can't go to sleep if you're hungry. Skip that meal and go pray. Sacrifice. Put God before everything. Man, look, are you going to be perfect? No. But by seeking him daily and just confessing and saying, God, I failed today. And if, if you know the areas you fell in, God, I fell in this. I watched porn. I, I looked at that girl or that guy too long. I did these things, Jesus. I'm sorry. When you really mean it in your heart that you're sorry, he literally forgives you every single time. In Christ is lit. It is, it is, it, it is not hard. It, is not, it does not suck. It is not boring. It's actually what you, my man and woman of God, have really been desiring your whole life. Because some of you who are stuck on the porn, the alcohol, the weeds and the weed and pills, the reason you're doing these things is because your spirit is crying out for God. When you encounter God and you experience his presence, you don't want none of that no more. Everything's satisfied. The flesh got to go down. You're walking in the spirit. The Holy Ghost is the best high. 
that new wine. The Bible literally says, don't get drunk off of that, off of the alcohol, the wine, the wine of the world. Get drunk off that new wine. The Holy Ghost. Worship and praise. It's literally satisfying. It's fulfilling. It's purposeful. And then God gives you the desires of your heart. So it's either in Christ, you're going really, really win, win, win. Because in Christ, when you follow Jesus, you can't, you're, there's no way you cannot win. You always will win. So it's either you're in Christ and you're going to just keep going up that ladder closer and closer to God, not worried about demons, not worried about the world, focused on Jesus. Because when you focus on Jesus, you got power over every demon, over every worldly desire. You don't got no worries. It's either you're going all the way up, more heaven, more heaven, or you're going all the way down, more death, more death, more hell. So it's either more life or more death. There's no purgatory on this earth. There's no middle ground. You can't be like, well, I don't want God and I don't want the devil. So I'm just going to be in the middle. No, there's no way. When you wake up, you are literally walking on the stage. You are in the playing field. You can't just live this life and not practice anything. You have to practice something. Whether it's practicing lawlessness, iniquity, or practicing righteousness. And the righteousness of Christ gives you the ability to continue to grow and grow, renew your mind, transform. Hallelujah. Win souls. If you need to give your life to Christ and you know it's you, if you've been living in iniquity, if you've been living a lukewarm lifestyle, there's 724 people on here. I was saying this earlier. Warlocks and witches, they can't touch any any truly truly born again believer who's following Christ cannot be touched by a witch or a warlock. I'm talking about that. I'm talking about if you got born again yesterday, witches and warlocks can't touch you because you are covered by God. The ones who get hit are the lukewarms in church. So when a warlock and a witch come to, to the church, because last night a warlock came to the church, but couldn't stand the presence of God and it had to leave. But when warlocks and witches come to the church, which I encourage, come, because they don't get saved. But when witches and warlocks come to the church, they can only touch the Lukis, the ones who don't have a relationship with God. Choose life. So if you want to give your life to Christ, if you know you need to, if you want to rededicate your life to Christ, he's calling you right now. Put a one in the chat if that's you. Put a one and only put it one time, please. Put a one in the chat. If you know you've been lukewarm or you've never given your life to Christ, look, you can get born again right now and give your life to Christ. Hallelujah. Look at all those ones, man. Powerful digital altar call. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. He loves you. He wants you to change. You can't practice iniquity and enter the kingdom of heaven. You can't think I can go watch porn every day and God will just, uh, you know, you know, he'll just, he'll, he'll, he understands. No, he wants you to change. And the only way you can change from things like porn, alcohol, all these things is by the power of the Holy Spirit. But you have to surrender. You have to literally say, God, I don't want this no more. And I'm partnering with you, Holy Spirit. And we're going to get this done. Is it going to be hard? Yeah, you're going to get tempted. But God will never give you a, a battle. The Bible is very clear on this. First Corinthians 10. He'll never give you a battle without a way out. Anytime you go through a temptation, a trial or tribulation, there's always a way out. The Bible is very clear about that. And God is not a liar. Amen, Lorenzo P. You're about to watch porn. Good. Well, no more. Man, the pornography's whack, man. Hey, if you know porn is whack, put porn is whack in the chat. Put porn is whack. Porn is whack. Like, hey, like up the video, man. Hey, can someone go back? Can someone go back into um, the people who put one and count how many ones um, there are, how many souls are getting saved? Somebody. If you're part of the Remnant Revival Outreach Center um, International, I've seen a few of y'all, a few of y'all on here. If that if that's you, please count up the ones and um and message me. Message me. The number on um on the school app. 
so I can know how many um, ones there were. Yeah, cause I saw. I just looked to the right. I saw a semi, a semi truck, driving by, by, and it said "count it up." And I was like, "Oh shoot! Thank you, Jesus! I forgot to count." <laughs> Amen. All right. So all for all of you that gave your life to Christ, this is what we're gonna do. We gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna give it. We gonna we gonna do it now. I want y'all to repeat after me. Take your right hand and put it over your heart. Because the Bible is very clear. Romans 10 9 says you must believe in your heart and confess from your mouth. So I want you to focus because look, if you only believe in Jesus in your mind, you can't, you can't be born again. You must believe in your heart. And when you believe in your heart, you're going to follow. So I want you to say this. Say, Jesus, don't type it. Say it out loud. If you're giving your life to Christ, don't type in the chat no more. Concentrate on this. Be born again. Say, Jesus, I believe you are my Lord. Say, I believe you are my master and I'm going to follow you. Say, Jesus, I believe you saved me by shedding your blood. Say, your blood washes all my sins. Say, I'm forgiven. Say, I confess all my sins to you right now. And say, thank you that I'm fully forgiven. And you remember my sins no more. Say it out loud. Now say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. You were buried. And you rose on the third day. Say, I surrender. Now say, I repent. Say, I turn away in my mind. I turn away from all wickedness sin now i want you to say the thing you've been struggling with say i turn away from blank say what it is if it's cigarettes vape alcohol porn fornication lying stealing cheating just say i turn away as you say that what it means is that you're recognizing that it's wrong and you don't want to do it no more now will you be perfect no but god's not looking for a perfect vessel he's looking for a vessel that's obedient a, a, a vessel that will truly be obedient and the, by, and the only way to be obedient Is to not want to do it So when you repent it's saying I don't want to do this no more That's what you're saying And you're, you're believing that in your heart and your mind So say I repent Now say Jesus fill me with the Holy Spirit Some of you are crying right now Some of you are being touched I just saw a quick vision Some of you are, being, are literally crying right now If one person right now is truly getting saved I know there's a whole I think there's 150 ones. Praise God. I hope all of you are, are telling the truth. But if one of y'all really, really surrenders right now and, be, and is born again, glory be to God. Now I'm going to pray for all of you. I'm going to pray. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. Father, that you would touch every brother and sister right now listening. The Bible says that the angels rejoice when a sinner comes to repentance, to change. And all of these men and, men and women of God have repented. I command every unclean spirit to come up and come out now. Every demon leaf. I bind every unclean spirit and I command you to come up and come out now. Every unclean spirit, come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Every demon that's tormenting their life, come up, come out and go to the abyss. I bind every unclean spirit. I bind every strong man. And I bind every other demon that's operating with the strong man in their temple, in the flesh or the soul. I bind you in Jesus' name. Now you come up and come out. I rebuke you to the abyss in Jesus' name. You have to come up and you have to come out now. Come out of the mouth. Come off the back. Come out the stomach. Come out. Come off the head. All witchcraft come off of them in Jesus name. I break every generational curse because Galatians 3 says that Jesus became a curse so that all curses will be broken. So right now I break every curse by what Jesus did on the cross. Every generational curse is broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demonic cycle broken in Jesus' name. Every chain right now broken off of them in Jesus' name. Every soul tie broken in Jesus' name. Cut. Hallelujah. Remando. Sakare. Some of you are feeling the presence of God. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Speak in tongues. Le remando. koto. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Open up your mouth. Rivers of living water in your belly. Remando. Open up your mouth and pray in the Spirit of God. 
Receive, receive, the, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive that gift. Be baptized in the power so you could be a witness. If you're praying in tongues right now, the Holy Spirit is baptizing you in his power. Open up your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Hallelujah. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Karebato. Remandia sakato. Open up your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 God is so good. I got to block somebody else. Hold on. Yeah, hard user on this channel. Look, I don't play with the pharisaicals, man. The minute they start wilding out in the chat. If you start wilding out in the chat, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. I'm just going to block you, man. You, you just go, you go follow some other YouTube channel until you can catch it. May God be with you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Grace. Hallelujah, man. God is good. How many souls got saved, man? Who counted it? How many souls got saved? Was it 150? How many? Who counted it up? Anybody count it? All right. Oh, what's up, Lavanda? Okay, Lavanda, I trust you, Lavanda. 94. Amen. God bless you, your husband, and your family, Lavanda. God bless you. All right, guys, we out. I gave the message if he just got on. Yes, a warlock came to the church last night. But again, they can't do nothing. If you're a Holy Spirit-filled saint who has a relationship with God, can't touch you. Go watch the video to the end. Go like it. Go comment on it. Go share it with everybody. Make that thing go viral. God bless you all. Um, all those who are partnering with us, supporting. Make sure you take the free discipleship course. It's free. It's free. It's free. It's free. Free discipleship course. And you can get plugged into what we're doing internationally at The Rock. We got so much in the mix, man. We're cooking up a lot. It's a lot of work, but it's so worth it. California, if you're in the California area, we are coming to your city um, San Diego, we're going to be in La Mesa, no, Spring Valley, Spring Valley, which is right next to La Mesa, November 3rd and 4th, that's a Friday and Saturday, you can sign up, sign up on Eventbrite, it's a free revival, we got almost 3,000 people who have signed up, it's going to be powerful, the Holy Ghost is going to move, I mean, shoot, if you're not in Cali, fly in, drive in, get an Airbnb, it's beautiful weather, you know, no, November time frame. If you're from New York, you know it's getting cold. Come to Cali. Come to the West Coast. It'll be fun. Come pull up. And right now we're planning um, New York City. So that we're going to be out in New York soon too. Love you guys. God bless you guys. Again, tune in. School app. It's free. Um, watch us. We got services every Tuesday and Saturday. And if you want to partner with us financially to expand what we're doing here at The Rock, to win more and more souls, that's what we're about. You also can partner with us financially through all giving outlets. If you guys, um, after I post this video, you guys can go to any of my videos and you'll see in the description the ways to give. If you want to sow, sow on to what God's doing, it means a lot. It really blesses us. It helps us to continue this, 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 this assignment, this operation that we're doing. God bless you guys. And again, we are in, if you want to come in person and see us, we are in Central Florida. We got service on Tuesday. Come pull up. Come, come join us in worship. If you need deliverance, if you need healing, whatever it is, come through. God bless you and love you guys. In Jesus' name.